Hello, and welcome to NTD News Today. Kevin Hogan here. Let's take a look at our top stories. Winter weather and Omicron creating bah humbug for holiday travelers. We have the latest on flight cancellations and delays. A possible COVID surge has led to a contingency plan to prevent a health care worker shortage. And there's a multi-million dollar COVID settlement in New Jersey. And a warship is pausing its deployment after an outbreak among its fully vaccinated crew. U.S. flights are being canceled or delayed left and right today after the Omicron variant forced tens of thousands of Christmas travelers to change their plans over the weekend. NTD's Jessica Beatty has the details. Holiday travel woes continue, with thousands of U.S. flights delayed or canceled Monday. As of Monday morning, flight tracking site FlightAware says over 1,400 U.S. flights have been delayed and over 860 U.S. flights have been canceled. That's after major airlines canceled 1,500 flights Sunday. Some airlines blaming their cancellations on a mix of winter weather and the Omicron variant. A sharp increase in COVID-19 infections prompting airlines to cancel flights and to quarantine pilots and crew. Last week, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky said Omicron accounts for 90 percent of COVID-19 cases in some regions. But early studies suggest Omicron leads to milder symptoms and far fewer hospitalizations than previous strains of the virus. Still, health officials have maintained a cautious outlook. White House Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Anthony Fauci telling ABC's This Week on Sunday that he thinks masks are still necessary on planes. I mean, I think if you look at wearing a mask and the filtration on on planes, things are reasonably safe. We want to make sure people keep their masks on. I think the idea of taking masks off, in my mind, is is really not something we should even be considering. Earlier this month, Southwest Airlines CEO Gary Kelly told senators that masks don't add much, if anything, to fight the spread of the virus on airplanes. During Sunday's interview, Fauci also signaled that a vaccine mandate for U.S. air travel could work to get more people vaccinated. Jessica Beatty, NTD News. More than 2,000 flights have been canceled globally today due to the Omicron variant surge. According to the website Flightware, there were more than 700 cancellations early morning within, into, or out of the U.S., and over 3,000 flights were delayed. More than 6,000 flights have been canceled worldwide since Christmas Eve as airline staff and crew call out sick. U.S. retail sales rose 8.5 percent during this year's holiday shopping season from November 1st to December 24th. That's according to a report released by MasterCard on Sunday. The increase was powered by a rush to stores amid supply chain concerns as well as soaring e-commerce sales. U.S. e-commerce sales jumped 11 percent in this year's holiday shopping season. That's according to a MasterCard Spending Pulse report. This again underscores the pandemic's role in transforming customers' shopping habits. The data shows holiday e-commerce sales made up almost 21 percent of total retail sales this year. The sector continues to see growth as consumers enjoy the ease of browsing and buying in the comfort of their own homes. Sectors such as jewelry and electronics continue to show growth as less spending on dining out, travel, and leisure encourage shoppers to make other purchases. The CDC has issued a contingency plan to prevent a shortage of health care workers. It's over a possible surge of the highly infectious Omicron variant. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has issued an alert about the Omicron variant. The agency has updated its recommendations for healthcare facilities. An update the CDC says will better protect medical workers and their patients. This contingency plan includes shortening the amount of quarantine time for infected healthcare workers. Now, healthcare workers who are asymptomatic with a COVID infection can return to work after seven days of quarantine. That's regardless of whether or not they're vaccinated. According to a report, New Jersey is set to pay a settlement of about $53 million. It's going to the families of 119 deceased seniors. They died because the state allegedly mishandled the COVID-19 outbreaks in state-run veteran care facilities. A New Jersey official confirmed the terms of the settlement to NJ Advance Media. Each of the families will get about $445,000. The families of those who have lost their lives to COVID-19 have gone through so much. This settlement will hopefully allow them to move forward without years of protracted and uncertain litigation. One of the lawsuits alleged a senior died because the facility didn't take the right steps to control the spread. It cited how management discouraged the use of masks and gloves 
and their hesitance to close common areas where infected and healthy residents mingled. Now on to the military. A U.S. Navy warship has paused its deployment. That's after a COVID outbreak happened among its fully vaccinated crew. The warship, the USS Milwaukee, was headed to South America. The Fourth Fleet said the ship remains in port as some sailors test positive. All infected sailors are being isolated on board. The fleet said that some of those infected have mild symptoms, and they said the vaccine is helping to prevent serious illness. The National Hockey League pushes back its return from the holiday break by another day. The league's postponed today's 14-game schedule to allow time to complete COVID-19 tests. The league says the delay is needed to analyze league-wide COVID testing results and see what clubs are actually ready to compete. The league was originally set to be on break from Friday to Sunday for Christmas, but the NHL and its players' union agreed to start the break two days earlier as CCP virus cases surge. Today's postponement brings the total number of missed games to 64. NHL players will not compete in men's ice hockey at next year's Beijing Winter Olympics due to COVID-19 concerns. The league said it would use that time period to reschedule postponed NHL games instead. A psychiatry professor at the University of California, Irvine, has been fired. It's because he didn't comply with the school's COVID-19 vaccine mandate, one the school says it put in place to protect the safety and well-being of the university community. Dr. Aaron Carietti used to work at the University of California, Irvine School of Medicine until the institution fired him for refusing the vaccine. The school, known as UCI, says it requires vaccines for most students and staff for the safety and well-being of the university community. Carietti sued the school in August, arguing that exceptions should be made for people with natural immunity. On American Thought Leaders, the professor claimed that the vaccines may pose a risk to some individuals. This episode aired before he was fired. And again, some evidence that individuals with natural immunity may be at higher risk than the general population uh, for side effects from the vaccine. So we're proposing using this intervention on individuals that don't need it, that won't benefit, or it won't benefit other people, where those individuals will assume some degree of unnecessary risk. In a blog post, Carietti said he received a notice of what he called an arbitrary and capricious firing. That was on December 16th. His termination was effective that day. Carietti addresses the concern that allowing exemptions for natural immunity would be a burden on the university. And I think the obvious answer to that is, well, it doesn't have to slow down your system at all. If people want to opt out on the basis of natural immunity, put the burden of proof on them. Just have them go get the testing on their own time. You don't have to administer the T-cell test or the antibody test. You don't have to go dig up their old medical record establishing that they've already had COVID. Just ask them to bring that in and their work can sign off on that. Carietti said the university seemed to be a fan of his work before he challenged one of its policies. He says he immediately became a threat to the health and safety of the community. When asked about the termination, UC Irvine said it doesn't comment on personnel issues. Carietti said the university tried to keep him from doing any outside professional work while he was on unpaid suspension. He claims this was an effort to pressure him to resign from the job he had for 15 years. A USA swimming official resigns in protest over the participation of a transgender swimmer. She says in her resignation letter she can't back a sport that allows biological men to compete against women. Cynthia Millen has been involved in the sport for roughly 30 years. Her letter indicates she resigned earlier this month. She says everything fair about swimming is being destroyed and that swimmer Leah Thomas, who is biologically male, should only compete at exhibition or in time trials and not go head-to-head against women. Thomas is a 22-year-old University of Pennsylvania women's swim team member. Thomas formerly competed as a member of the men's swimming team before undergoing hormone suppression. Thomas recently broke three college women's records in freestyle swimming. Critics say the hormone therapy has not significantly reduced the advantages Thomas has as a biological male in women's competitions. The slaying of child beauty queen Jean Benet Ramsey is one of the most notorious child murder cases in the United States. 25 years after her death, the killer is still at large. John Benet Ramsey was only six years old when she was found dead on December 26, 1996. The girl had been bludgeoned and strangled in her family's Boulder, Colorado residence. Ramsey was found dead in the basement several hours after her mother called 911 to report that her daughter was missing and that a ransom note was left behind. 
Her death was ruled a homicide, but nobody was ever charged. Details of the crime, along with footage of John Bonet at beauty pageants, propelled the case into one of America's highest profile mysteries. On December 21st, the city of Boulder addressed the 25th anniversary of John Bonet's death. The city said that the police department is reviewing genetic DNA testing processes to see if those can be applied to this case moving forward. According to Boulder, investigators have analyzed nearly 1,000 DNA samples. And detectives have traveled to 19 states to interview more than 1,000 people in connection with this crime. In 2008, the testing of new DNA discovered on John Bonet's clothing revealed new evidence. It confirmed the involvement of an unexplained third party in her murder. This led the former Boulder District Attorney Mary Lacey to clear the girl's parents of any involvement. She called the couple victims of this crime. A police spokesperson said the case is still active and ongoing. After a long Christmas weekend, the jury in the sex abuse case against British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell resumes deliberations today. The 60-year-old is accused of recruiting and grooming four teenage girls between 1994 and 2004. She allegedly did this for her ex-boyfriend and employer, the late financier Jeffrey Epstein. Maxwell pleaded not guilty to six counts of sex trafficking and other crimes. A jury in Manhattan federal court last week requested transcripts of the four accusers' testimony. The woman said Maxwell played a key role in their abuse by Epstein, but Maxwell's lawyers strongly disputed the women, questioning why their stories have changed over the years. The case is one of the most high-profile trials in the wake of the Me Too movement. Maxwell is being held at Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center. Coming up, groups of reenactors donned continental uniforms to recreate George Washington's crossing of the Delaware River. Hundreds of spectators gathered to watch the annual event. And the new movie, The Kingsman, is a prequel that tells the origin story in the Kingsman movie franchise. It's the third movie in the series. All that and more here on NTD News. You worked hard for your money. You invest in stability for your retirement and your family's future to build and leave them with something greater. The next unprecedented financial crisis, political misstep, or unstable government can depreciate it all away. It was called the gold standard for a reason, the financial preservation of tomorrow. Diversify your assets against inflation, market volatility, and the unknown with real money. Hedge your wealth with the purest form of money, physical gold and silver. Because any currency printed on paper can be manipulated. What's backing up your IRA? Do what you need to do right now to be prepared with the Reagan Gold Group. Visit now rggusakit.com or call us at 866-912-1384. Receive up to $2,500 in free silver coins and a free safe with your new Precious Metals IRA. Call now. Travel for K Original, Jola Nemdo. The moment your five senses awaken, K Culture. The taste of Jola Nemdo leads to the world. K food. An exhilarating memory that I will cherish. There's no end to happiness. K life. A great place to truly enjoy traveling. K travel. Jola Nemdo. Oh, hey, doesn't it feel like there's communists everywhere? In fact, the Chinese Communist Party has been subverting America from every angle. So whether it's compromising our politicians, controlling Hollywood, manipulating Wall Street, or infiltrating our schools, they have stopped at nothing to take down America. And I believe that in order for us to not become like China, we need citizens who know the truth. So go on over to getepic.com, stay informed with a subscription to the Epic Times, and you will get instant access to this infographic. New York's City Meals on Wheels is now 40 years old. The anniversary was celebrated on Christmas Day when volunteers delivered 20,000 festive holiday meals to elderly New Yorkers in need. 300 volunteers dedicated their holiday to helping deliver the Christmas dinners on Saturday. Meal recipients are age 60 and older. Many are also homebound and disabled, suffering from conditions like vision loss, diabetes, arthritis, and heart disease. 
The nonprofit has delivered 65 million meals since its founding 40 years ago. A grand piece of American history played out again in Pennsylvania and New Jersey on Christmas Day. Hundreds gathered along the Delaware River to watch the reenactment of George Washington's 1776 crossing. That's after pandemic restrictions forced viewers to watch it online last year. On Christmas Day, reenactors in Continental Army uniforms set out in boats at the Washington Crossing Historic Park. It's the 69th annual reenactment of George Washington's crossing of the Delaware River in 1776. The group retraced a route taken by the general and his troops during the American Revolution. The biggest message here is just that it was a very pivotal time to the revolution. It was, you know, Christmas. It was weather was terrible. All these people were bedraggled. Some of them had no shoes, um, starving soldiers. A lot of their enlistments were coming up. And so this was a point where it really could have turned another way. The weather, lack of supplies. The event started with several hundred soldiers listening to an inspiring speech by General Washington. Reenactors then rowed across the river in replica Durham boats. One of them said this tradition helps preserve history. Uh, when we do battle reenactments, we get into almost first-person mode and we, we go through uh, all the hardships. We cook on over fire and uh, sometimes we do campaigning, which is we don't drive. We, we walk into various sites and things like that and camp on the ground. and. Yeah, we, we, we feel it. We, we uh, close our eyes and we, we feel the actual history. In years past, thousands have gathered each Christmas on the banks of the Delaware River to watch the event. Other activities include reenactments of historical processions, cannon displays, and more. In the original crossing, 2,400 soldiers led by Washington managed to brave the frozen river. They reached the New Jersey side of the Delaware just before dawn, marking a major turning point in the Revolutionary War and American history. Preparations are now underway for Pasadena's Tournament of Roses Parade. The annual event leads up to the Rose Bowl college football game and has featured prominently in America's New Year's celebrations since 1890. Workers from different companies, nonprofits, equestrian teams, and bands are putting the finishing touches on their various floats. This year's theme is Dream, Believe Now. As many as 150,000 spectators will attend the parade, City of Pasadena spokeswoman Lisa Derderian encouraged parade goers to get vaccinated, mask up, and to physically distance when possible. The parade was canceled last year over pandemic concerns. This year, both the Rose Parade and the Rose Bowl will proceed as scheduled. Proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test are required for attendance. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope was launched by rocket from South America's northeastern coast on Christmas Day, opening a new era of astronomy. It was built to give the world a glimpse of the universe as it existed when the first galaxies were formed. Here's more. And liftoff. Decollage. Decollage, liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the The universe. $9 billion infrared telescope, which has been hailed by NASA as the premier space science observatory of the next decade, was carried aloft inside the cargo bay of an Ariane 5 rocket that blasted off from the European Space Agency's launch base in French Guiana. After a 27-minute ride into space, the 14,000-pound instrument was released and should gradually unfurl to nearly the size of a tennis court over the next 13 days as it sails onward on its own. Coasting through space for two more weeks, the Webb telescope will reach its destination in solar orbit one million miles from Earth, about four times farther away than the Moon, and Webb's special orbital path will keep it in constant alignment with the Earth as the planet and telescope circle the Sun in tandem. By comparison, Webb's 30-year-old predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, orbits the Earth from 340 miles away, passing in and out of the planet's shadow every 90 minutes. Named after the man who oversaw NASA through most of its formative decade of the 1960s, Webb is about 100 times more sensitive than Hubble and is expected to transform scientists' understanding of the universe and our place in it. 
Astronomical operation of the telescope is expected to begin in the summer of 2022. And now we have some simple tips on how to naturally boost dopamine, a brain chemical also known as the feel-good hormone. It'll help you feel motivated and focused. Here's Gina Marie, who brings us Strong Mind and Body. Welcome to Strong Mind and Body, I'm Gina Marie. It's a substance in your brain known as the motivation molecule. This neurotransmitter is associated with the ability to focus, experience pleasure, maintain attention span, follow through and feel satisfaction. Here are some natural nutrients you can use to balance out your dopamine levels. Raw cacao. Raw cacao used in dark chocolate is a good source. Dark chocolate, not milk chocolate, contains cocoa flavanols, which can help boost blood flow to the brain, boost mood, and improve the ability to think clearly. Curcumin. Curcumin, which is a bioactive ingredient in turmeric, has powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Its impact on mood may be associated with dopamine levels. Magnesium. Approximately half of Americans may be deficient in magnesium, which is essential for brain function. Magnesium is also involved in regulating blood sugar, blood pressure, blood flow, heart rhythm, as well as promoting sleep, memory, immune function, and healthy aging. Vitamin D. Maintaining optimal vitamin D levels is essential for overall brain function and promoting the actions of dopamine in particular. Fish oil. The two main omega-3 fatty acids found in fish oil are necessary for the functioning of all cells. Along with nutrients, there are some foods you can add to your diet that will raise dopamine levels. Almonds. Use these nuts as well as many others as snacks, a topping for salads and yogurt or in casseroles. Cheese. Dairy cheese can be added in so many foods and enjoyed as a snack on its own. And of course, we can't forget cruciferous vegetables. Broccoli, cauliflower, kale, Brussels sprouts and cabbage. They all contain sulfur compounds which are needed for optimal release of dopamine. Also, some great fruits include starfruit, apricots, elderberries, cranberries, strawberries, kiwi, guava, avocado, and figs. And in the seeds category, the seeds that top the list are pumpkin, squash, watermelon. Further down the list are sesame seeds, sunflower, black walnuts, and also include in your diet oatmeal and green tea. Healthy levels of dopamine are critical for various reasons. Dopamine is necessary for brain health, motivation, ability to focus, think, make decisions, concentrate, and experience pleasure. It also plays a role in sleep, heart rate, pain, kidney function, and movement. Certain foods and nutrients are important for maintaining a healthy dopamine balance. The Kingsman film series has a prequel now in theaters. The prequel to the spy flick franchise takes place at the outset of the First World War. But there are other ways of doing your duty. You're going to need a suit. The origins of the well-tailored spies are revealed in The King's Man. We are the first independent intelligence agency. Preserving peace and protecting life. Welcome to the club. Set in the opening years of the First World War, an entirely new cast steps into the Savile Row shoes of the Kingsman. She sort of runs everything. She is the... Um... She is, not only does she kind of run the household, but she also kind of keeps everyone in check. <laughs> she is the kind of, you know, the, the glue really, emotional glue, um, but also, you know, she just keeps the, everything ticking along. Shola is an ex-warrior um, um, who befriended the Duke of Oxford in Africa. So he becomes uh, instrumental in the formation of this uh, independent uh, uh, secret agency. So I play Conrad, he's the Marquis of Oxford, the, the son of um, Rafe, Rafe Fiennes' character, the, the Duke of Oxford. He's, he's, you know, he's like this young sort of um, uh, 
idealist trying to um, join the military at a time where, you know, literally every one was. Rasputin himself, regardless of this movie, is a, is a figure that, that, that is larger than life and, and, and kind of looms over the Russian psyche then and now, you know, um, a character shrouded in mystery and rumour and gossip and myth. <laughs> Thanks for watching. At NTD, we're honored to be your source for the news. Catch us again tonight at 6.30 Eastern. In New York City, I'm Kevin Hogan. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.